Our next guest played golf at the University of Houston, where he roomed with much better golfers like Fred Couples and Blaine McAllister. He then went on to become a prolific broadcaster. He's called some of the greatest moments in sports history, including several memorable Super Bowls. Also called last Sunday night's Patriots-Rams game. He's known for his catchphrase, hello, friends. We're very happy that we get to call him one of our friends. He's definitely the only guest this week that's had the Danettes in his house. Please welcome Jim Nance. Yes. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Yeah, you showed up. You got the golf cart there. You're looking good. Feeling good. Yeah, you. Happy to be back with my buddies. Okay, so if I took, thank you. Let's say golf bag driver. What to get to your house from Pebble? You mean from my house, not to the right, range here? Right here. We're from, from, oh, from right here, I'd say it's inside 200 yards, maybe. Oh, it is? Yeah. If you're taking a direct line, yes. Okay, so like a five iron. For you, probably more like a seven iron. Yeah. Yeah. But from my house to the 18th green would be about maybe 250. Yeah. So I'm in between here and there. Not trying to give my coordinates away here. <laughs> my wife's going to kill me for this. Uh, but yeah, somewhere, uh, you know, it's over near Pacific Grove. Yeah, of course it yes, is. Yes, yes. Yeah, of course it is. Uh, I, I don't know if it enters your mind, but is there any point where you go, I live at Pebble Beach? Every day. I, I mean, it should. No, it's, and it's with gratitude. I mean, I cannot start my day without having a moment of reflection uh, you call it whatever you want, yeah. uh, prayerful introspection. I start every day with my thanks for being able to have so many of the many blessings that have come my way, and that's certainly one of them. Well, you got a great wife. You have little, two little ones there. Great and older daughter. Yes, it's, yes. It's 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 and it's it's beautiful. We love living here. Uh, we made the decision eight years ago that this is where we wanted to spend our life and, and have it as a base and we're here full time. And it's not like every week is the week that you're experiencing right now. Yeah. I mean, it is always fun, but it's much quieter than it is the week of the uh, AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am, the busiest week of the year. Now we have the US Open coming yeah. in June. That's gonna be fun and I get to just experience it as a fan, yeah. be walking around uh, outside the gallery ropes and just enjoying uh, the competition. But the Concours, the car show here, is the biggest event of the year uh, as far as just pure volume of people. The Concours d'Elegance. Yeah. It's a little out of my, I, I have no idea what that's all about, but it's an interesting watch. It's just people watching. I, I love it. Any fallout from us being at the house last year a little with bit. your wife? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a little bit. Someone, uh, I think it was Andrew, posted uh, videos now. I know that you've You've, uh, who posted the who post not in the house? Not not in the house, oh, the, but, our but par from three. the par three, and um, uh, which is fine. Oh um, my gosh, just, I'm so sorry. You, no, you're fine. It's just you know, it's we've had a few people show up unexpected at the house <laughs> since then um, because you happen to pan to your right. Oh no! So you can see exactly where we are. <laughs> It's okay, my wife. She'll get over it maybe in three or four years, but wow. no, it's okay. You're back. We love you guys. <laughs> oh, maybe maybe that's why when I said to Jim, hey, I, we McLovin. can't wait to come this year. And then he goes, oh, okay. <laughs> that's not true. That's not <laughs> yes, true. Paul. Dan, we're going to walk in the house, and it has one of those little signs and baskets, leave your cell phone here when we walk in this year. <laughs> You're fine. McLovin. <laughs> Uh, is part of the family. <laughs> We're fine with it. Seriously. Oh, I didn't. He's, I didn't. He's a good man. That. No, it's not. I was trying to throw a, a lame joke out there. We're fine. Okay. Yeah. Dan, okay. I should get pro flowers. Uh, yes, yeah. you should bring get them on you now. Bring some some roses. <laughs> Can over. get them over there in about thirty minutes? Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> so much happens after the Super Bowl because we always want to rate how good it was. The halftime show. Um, the commercials, yes, everything, 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 everything's, everything everybody's about, got an opinion on all that. Of course, it comes with the territory. And then when I saw you Tuesday, when I first got here, it everybody was focusing on the ratings. Like, was this a good Super Bowl? Like, we want to process it right there, yeah. and we want to have an answer right there. How do you explain the viewership 
of start this, you know, at the start of the Super Bowl to the end of the Super Bowl because you keep track on probably you know 15 minute increments. I mean, I don't. I happen to see the numbers. Yeah. And I, I, I like trying to crunch numbers and talk ratings. That's not what they they asked me to do. But you can't help. There's so much discussion about it. Interpretation comes with it. But the reality is, I had a lot of people say, "Oh, I saw the rating. Saw's a little bit down." By the way, it still is the biggest show in television by a mile. Yeah. Um, but. It, what's interesting is, uh, once I glanced at it, the idea that because the game didn't have a lot of offense, that people were t tuning out is not true. They, the actual the rating grew through the entire game broadcast. When the game started, the audience wasn't there. It wasn't there all afternoon. Even in the pregame run-up, the four hours leading to it, the, the, the viewership was down, whatever it was, 10 15%. So when we started the game, and again, I'm just – a guy just looked at the numbers. They don't ask me to be their ratings guru. Uh, we were doing a 35 rating in the first quarter. And I'll just give you a little example of how that's down. Our AFC championship game, New England, Kansas City, which did a monster rating, yeah. which was the second biggest AFC championship game rating in 42 years. We had a bigger rating in the fourth quarter and overtime of Kansas City, New England, than we did the first quarter and a half of the Super Bowl. We had less of an audience at the Super Bowl than we did at the end of the AFC championship. Why? I, you know, I... You tell me why. It's not that anyone knew there weren't going to be a lot of fireworks on the field. I happen to enjoy a great defensive game myself. I, and Tony and I had a lot of fun with it. But I'm I, guessing the I, Patriots fatigue. I think it's, and I don't think L.A. has embraced the Rams. I, and I don't think it's L.A. By the way, the L.A. rating for that market was lower than the national rating. We did a lower rating in L.A. than the rating for the game. Uh, and again, you're talking fractions. If it, whatever it was, a 41-1, yeah. yeah. it did a 40.8 in in Los Angeles. But I think that's more to do with America just doesn't quite know the Rams yet. You know, they don't know that much about Jared Goff yet. It sounds inconceivable yeah. to us. You know, we're fantasy football players. We're football freaks. We watch all the games. You know, we know about Aaron Donald, how great Todd Gurley is. Uh, but I still think it, it just wasn't there yet as far as an attraction. And they, obviously they didn't bring a lot of people uh, Travel-wise, as yeah. far as the fan base to the game, not that that would affect the TV ratings, but you know, it's a it's a growing thing in Los Angeles. They're going to be super for a long time uh, with Sean McVay and with Goff and everybody else is in Aaron Donald. Uh, but I just I think that was more of that than anything else. Maybe a little bit of uh, Patriots fatigue. I don't know. I, I have a hard time believing that, but I'm sure that people think otherwise. Your opening line to Tony Romo. Yeah. Welcome to the Super Welcome Bowl. Welcome to the Super Bowl. <laughs> He had a great line and his back. Answer, yeah. 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 So I've been waiting for somebody to say that my entire <laughs> life. He's, he is, uh, it was a great, it was I love a great the guy. Comeback. He's been an unbelievable teammate. We've uh, enjoyed these two years. Uh, it's just, my life's in a good spot now. And, and having, uh, I mean, you're lucky you get Faldo mm -hmm. and you get Romo. And then I get and then, Grant Hill and Bill Raftery yes. coming up here with March Madness. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, good. I'm really lined up. When did you know, though, and, and I, I remember talking to somebody where Romo, they had heard about an audition and said, oh, he's going to be different than any other analyst. Now, this this was not CBS. Okay. But I was told it's different than anybody who's going to be on TV. Well, he didn't audition with anyone but us, so you may have – we actually didn't even audition. Uh, he, he had the job before he'd even put a headset yeah. on. But well, somebody just, heard him. Uh, did you, you guys did mock – you're we right. had some mock okay, broadcasts was, uh, starting in May of 2017 yeah. from the broadcast center in a little hole uh, in a sound booth on the second floor watching a game off of a monitor uh, not even half as big as this monitor in front of your desk. Okay. So you're trying to call a game off of something about that big. And it was a, it was a broadcast that a game that I had broadcast the previous year, Carolina against Oakland. So I kind of knew where, where this game was going, what the plays were. Uh, Tony was not informed in advance of what the game was going to be. So he called it cold and uh, it was really good. I mean, he's, he's definitely grown. I don't want to take away anything from the effort, the coaching from, from a lot of people involved in the process, but Tony has some natural instincts that are just off the charts. But you guys, this is the new summer on Madden. Well, that's, we would strive for that. Uh, th th that's a wonderful compliment, and uh, that means. But this all generation, it, it, you I think are. the dynamics actually are a little similar in style. I think because I think, and I'm take myself out of this. Nobody, no one's Pat Summerall, okay. But I, 
I, I do see in in Tony, I do see uh, a certain pizzazz and entertainment value yeah. that we haven't seen since since John Madden. Uh, I, I I got to work with Pat for years, so I I worshipped the guy. I I actually carried in my pocket during the game uh, one of his sobriety coins that his wife gave me after he passed in April of 2013, and I yeah. wanted just to have a presence. I had it in my pocket when I called Super Bowl 50, which was my first Super Bowl since Pat had passed. Uh, and I just was thinking of him a lot. I had a, I had a picture card of Jack Whitaker who called Super Bowl one, my heroes. We've talked wow. about it in the past, yeah. how much I look up to these guys. But as far as Pat Summerall goes, I, for 10 years, got to be part of the CBS golf team with Pat as the anchor. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you know, a lot of people in our business can say, uh, hey, I worked with Pat Summerall. Well, you may have been at the same network, but you didn't really work with him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you may have been on the second crew or the third crew, fourth crew, you weren't calling games with him. Yeah. I didn't do NFL games with Pat, but I did 20 golf events a year. And for 10 years, hundreds of dinners, traveling all over the country. I got to work with him. You know, I got to pick his brain. I got to be around him, just listen to the way he told the story and the presence he had. So uh, our game on Sunday marked 17 years to the day since Pat Summerall's last football broadcast. It was Pat and John. Rams Patriots in the Adam Vinatieri, <laughs> the first oh, of the six. Oh, cool. So I, you know, I kind of have that in my heart that 17 years ago to go today, Pat and John called their last game. And, you know, we strive for that. Tony and I talk about that. That's kind of the model you say down the road, get enough reps. If somebody, we were lucky enough to say that team, as far as a tandem, reminds us of a, what that used to be, that that would be a tremendous compliment. Jim Nance joining us here uh, on the uh, opposite end of the driving range here. Good, a good end here too. Well, they were trying to hit into Have us you had yesterday. A few close. Oh I yeah, so. Mickelson yeah. was trying to. Yeah, no question. Yeah. But Phil would do that. Yeah, yeah. he would. I think it was funny, you know. But you know, I'm trying to carve out a career. <laughs> um, well, you've, you're 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 wearing his equipment logo right there. Uh, yeah. proudly I Cal see. Callaway. So he's trying to pound a few Cal in here. Have have they come within 10, 10 yards of here? Uh, they're about 40 yards, okay. but you can hear him plopping down yeah. here. This means he's flying at about 300. This is about yes. 340 from here to where they are on okay. that seat back there. And yeah. that's uphill, by the way. It is, and you're getting no roll out here, as you can see. So yeah. no, nothing's bouncing in here. Last time you played Pebble. I played Pebble. I, I, first off, I'm on Pebble every day I'm home. I take my son down to Neville's, which is a little uh, halfway house, if you will, off the 10th tee. And we get one of those... Uh, Encrustables, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and a banana. <laughs> he loves that. That's a big father-son moment. We ride in the cart. We go down and um, see a lot of golfers along the way, stop, watch some golf swings, and uh, we have that experience virtually every day I'm home. As far as playing, I don't play that much. I really don't. I, 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 want, I want my time to be with my family. Do you I travel so much that I just can't justify? I wouldn't feel right about it. I mean, I play occasionally, but I, I haven't. I haven't played in, in several months. I want to come home, and I want to—I I just want to be around my kids and my wife, you know? Okay. But, but you set me up last year where I fell for this sob story that you don't play, and then we go do the par three tournament, <laughs> and then you won. There's, there's something about natural talent. You just can't, you know, sometimes it's just, it's just going to come out, you I, know, when the I moment's agree. there. I, I, I hit one shot yesterday. It's my first golf swing of, uh, of the year. We had the uh, Pebble Beach Pro-Am million dollar shot for charity which is a program yeah. that's going to air on the you know one of your com competitors and in, including over the weekend leading into our third round coverage starting the day and uh it was a hundred yard shot and we had darius was there i mean everyone that's in the celebrity field was there and at the end after it all cleared out uh my my wife and kids were there and they said take take a swing so i took my first swing of the year and it reminded me a lot of the shot in the backyard yeah because it was only a hundred yeah. yards Ours is calibrated with the golf balls being, you know, lot taken off of those. So it felt good. And actually, as I was over the shot, I was thinking of you. I was thinking about this big match today. Yeah. So it was my warm up okay. for today. And I'm hoping that McLovin's going to be there today again <laughs> as our uh, to video videographer. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Well, no, you. I want you to film does, the competition. Does he have to sign a release form, Jim? Oh, we have it. It's waiting <laughs> for him. Absolutely. I'm sure, I'm sure of that. Uh, no, it's one of those things you go to someone's house. <laughs> do you do you ask first? Can I 
you know, do you mind if I release a... No, uh, no, his, his logic is he'll beg for forgiveness. I see, yeah. You know, so if, um, when he screws so up... Where is the begging? <laughs> it's too late now. Believe me. <laughs> He's, he, he feels horrible. No, no, no. And, and I don't want should. him to. I don't want him to. No, because no, I got to tell bad. you, what really happened, too, and I think it may have been... I'm not sure which came first, but Faldo, and I had the, the whole CBS crew up to the house maybe the night before, and Faldo made a hole-in-one. Yeah. Hadn't that happened the night before? So he made the so plan. So Faldo released it. So I'm just egging you on a little no, bit. No, you're just you, making me feel better. No, no nice it, Faldo did. As, in fact, as soon as I went in the cup, I turned around and thought, uh-oh, somebody's going to post this. And I went over to his friend and I said, before you, she said, it's already oh, out there. <laughs> it's already out there. And two million hits later, whatever it was, yeah. um, it was so um, no no damage. By the way, and I don't know when how am to I coming to your house, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to say this in delicate terms, but I'm not looking forward to the next time you do the Super Bowl because I'd like some nice touchdowns more than like a one yard or two yard run. This, this is an amazing thing. I, it's just whatever, luck of the draw. So our last two Super Bowls, <laughs> the longest touchdown that I've called, two yards, <laughs> in two Super Bowls. Go to Super Bowl 50. Paul, look it up. All right, Malik Jackson, fumble recovery in the end zone. Jonathan Stewart, Carolina, dives over the top from the one. And C.J. Anderson from two yards out that clinched the game in the fourth quarter. Last week, we had Sony Michelle from two yards out. So zero, one, two, and two yard touchdown calls. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. And, and so we have a couple more years before your next Super Bowl. You no, know, it's, uh, they, they all are gifts when you get to do, let's face it. Oh, how, all of it. You asked me originally when we started out. Do you ever pause and think? Yeah. I mean, you. I hope you do. Yes. I hope you guys do. Yes. I mean, look where you are. You know what? But it, How that, many people, how many of your friends would love to trade out what you're doing? We make fun of them every day if we can on social yeah. media. <laughs> so, uh, I, I think when I handed out the Super Bowl the first time in Tampa after Steelers, Cardinals. Antonio Holmes. And then you're done. And I walked off that podium and I went, I'm from a town that used to be called a village. And I'm. I just handed out the Super Bowl trophy. It, they they don't remember you, you know, if you do it right. But if you screw up, then they might remember. Well, you. there's always that, in the, uh, you know, if you right? want to go there mentally. Yes, there's, yeah. there's a lot to uh, yeah. you can suffer through. And then I walk down the steps. There's confetti. The Steelers are doing, you know, snowmen. And I walked into the NBC trailer and I sat down by myself. No one was in yeah. there. And I thought, holy bleep. I, I just handed out this. And I yeah, didn't tell no. my family. I didn't, didn't tell. Know you were no, down at the no, game. no. They knew I was there. They didn't know I was handing out the trophy. Oh, I see. They, they didn't know. So you're then doing everybody's yeah. Yeah. like, they're going, "You're handing out the Super Bowl." Like, <laughs> I like I always love that. Hey, I'm going to text you, Jim. You're doing the Super I, I Bowl. No, it's a it's a big thing, and and the same time you're being pushed along because they want to get to the programming oh, on the back oh side God. of the People Super Bowl. People don't know that they're talking yes. to you in your yeah. ear. Like, all right, all right, speed it up. I had a, a quirky thing happen at the AFC Championship game after that thriller. The 37-31 overtime win by yeah. the Patriots did it in the locker room. I had no audio. so And then I had the double headset, kind of like what you have now, except the earplug type. Yeah. I couldn't hear a thing. I couldn't hear anything that <laughs> Robert Kraft, Bill Belichick, Tom Brady said. I just shook my head a lot. I couldn't play off of anything they said. I had nothing. And I just tried to guess how long this should go on. And they could have said anything. Yeah. You know, and and I would have just like Jim, said, yeah, sure. Jim, I hate Jim, you. Jim, you Thank and Tony, you. we Thank won you. in spite of you guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, good. Yeah. All right, let your wife know we're going to be over in a little bit. Oh, there, no, you are welcome to come. We've okay. been looking forward to it okay. for a long time. And, uh, and this contest is not just between us; what, we're all part of it. Oh, this. I know, but Jim, only the good ones are going to be there. Jim, can I hand you end. this to take uh, to confiscate that? It's my phone. <laughs> oh, then, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it will not be coming in, much uh, like uh, a concert. It's an interesting Jim screenshot will, uh, you have here. My gosh, <laughs> Jim will be on the call for. This is what you do when we're on the air, huh? It's a strange. Jim website. will be on the call for. Uh, the, Jim, I'm trying to do a promo to say goodbye. <laughs> Jim will be on the call this weekend for CBS, the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am. Of course, the Masters coming up and the NCAA tournament. And uh, we will be posting the video of our Part 3 tournament oh, boy. coming up. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV 
or download the Dan Patrick Show app.